Hello, Channing Benson, Splits Experimentation Advisor. This video is about metrics, how events get translated into metrics and the different choices you have for constructing those metrics in Split. So first, let's take a look at our events that we have to work with. In this example, we're going to be using a booking event from a hotel reservations application. So let's go to Split and see what that booking event looks like. We can see our events in the admin settings under event types. Um, you can search for an event type ID. In this case, booking is right at the top. We can go view instances of that event. And then we can search here. So for instance, if I only want to see events of traffic type user, we can filter on that. And here's all the events of traffic type user. We can view. And here's the detail of the event. We can see that the event type ID is booking. That's the type of event we're dealing with here. It has a traffic type name. It has a key, which is the user ID that was passed when creating this event. It has a timestamp of when the event happened, a value, and then properties. And so these are extra information about the event that can be used to, to filter the metrics that we create using the event. So let's go look at the metrics and the different ways we have of converting those events into metrics. We'll start by looking at bookings per user. And you can see in the definition of the metric, we have the desired direction. We want it to move. Of course, we want our bookings per user to increase. We have the traffic type. And the traffic type is important because a, a metric will only appear or will appear for any split of that traffic type. So, and it uses events of that traffic type to create this metric. So, it will only incorporate events that have the user traffic type, and this metric will appear in any split that also has the user traffic type. The key, one of the most important parts of, of the metric definition is this measure as. That's how the events get translated into the metric itself. And in this case, it's a count of events per user, and then we specify the event that, that we're counting, booking. So what this means is that in split, for each user that, in, that encounters our, our feature, um, for which we have a get treatment call for a split, we'll maintain a count of how many times the booking event also appeared in split with that same user ID during the length of the experiment. So this is a pretty simple example of, of how events get translated into a metric. We just count up the, the number of events that happen for a particular user and, and report that in split. One of the things to realize is this count of events per user, this per user comes from, from the traffic type. So for instance, if we had anonymous, it says count of events. Let's look at a similar metric, which is bookings percent of unique users. So in this case, you can see it's increase, traffic type is user. The measure as is different, and it's percent of unique users, whatever the traffic type is and the, again the booking event and this is very similar to the count of events per unique user except we're we're going to only count either a zero or one it'll be a zero if the user never performed this event or a one if they did and and never more than one so this is called a binomial distribution and and we we reported as percent of unique users this is a metric that's commonly used for for conversion percentage. What percentage of the users who saw this treatment checked out at our website? So those two metric types look at counts of events. What if we wanted to look at values? And there's a measure as for average, average of event values per user. And in this case, we're defining a metric called booking average price per user. We want to know the, the average price of all the, across all the bookings a user made during the experiment. So we measure as average of event values per user. And again, the booking, the event is the booking event. And the value is just the default value field, which was, which was the value I showed you in that event detail. And so this, this metric would accumulate an average for each user who saw the experiment of what, what their bookings were. Now, what if you wanted to use something besides the, the default value of the event? For instance, there was a property in our, in our booking event called nights. So what if we want to know the average nights 
um, for a user across the experiment over all their bookings. So you can do that by specifying a different value field. So if we look at the definition of average nights per user, you can see that in the value field, we've put the nights property. So instead of just using the default value of, of the booking event, which is the number of dollars spent, we're going to look at the number of nights. And you could have equally done a, 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 or similarly done a metric for average rooms per user because, because the booking event has a property called rooms. And that way you could keep track of that. And you can create a metric, you know, depending on, on what your experiment is intended to, what, what needle it's intending to move, then you create a metric to, to monitor that. You can also, with value metrics or with value um, values in the event, you can do a sum. So like I said, this is averaging. So if a user had, you know, a booking of $300 and a booking of $500, the average would have been $400. What if you would just want to keep track of the accumulation of that across the experiment? You can use measure as sum of event values per user. You can further refine your metric definitions by filtering on event properties. So for instance, if we wanted to know the average number of nights that our platinum users booked, we could create a metric, average nights per platinum user, and Again, we're looking at the average of event values per user of the booking event, with the value field being the nights property. But we're going to filter, if you notice, if we go back to our, our booking event, that there's an account type, which is the loyalty level of the customer who made the booking. So we're going to use that account type property to filter the events that we're going to incorporate into this metric to only events where the account type is in this list and the list has one element which is platinum. Um, we also have a metric here average nights per premium user where we're not only looking for account type platinum but we'll also match events where the account type equals gold. So we're able to slice and dice our metrics by characteristics in, in the event itself. You know in this case it's a characteristic of, of the person who made the reservation but you could also use one of the properties like, like nights and maybe filter on um, restricting the measurement of the metric to reservations where they booked more than three nights. That would be another possible use of properties. One thing to note about the property filters is you can have multiple property filters um, in, in a metric definition. And right now, the way split works is these are anded together. In the future, there'll be a way of doing ands and ors, but right now, it's, it's, it's only ands. So be aware of that if you're doing multiple property filters. There's a couple of other further options for restricting or refining the definition of a metric in split, and that's under this show advanced section. And there's two ways of changing the metric definition here. One is with a cap. So for instance, if, if you were seeing outliers in your data and you wanted to, to cap the value of a metric so in this case, it would be capping the average. More likely, you would cap a sum or a count of events um, so that you know, if there's no difference between someone doing the event 1,000 times or doing it 100 times, then, then cap it at, at 100. And then anything above 100 will be, will be moved down to 100. Um, the other possibility is to filter by has done event. And... This is the idea of making the counting of event predicated on the user for which that event was registered, having performed another event during the life of the experiment. So those are two additional options for filtering metrics. I'm going to show a couple more options for measure as, one of which is a ratio. So in this case, we're not, we're not talking about the hotel booking application. We're talking about an, uh, an issue tracking app and maybe we implemented a feature that we think is going to let people um, get a higher ratio of closing issues to, to creating issues. And in this case, we can measure the metric as the ratio of those two events. So again, increase, we want that, we want that percentage to increase. We've got the user traffic type, and then the measure as is ratio of two events per user, and the events involved are, the numerator is the issue that's closed, and the denominator was the event for, for adding an issue. Um, one thing to note here is that you want the denominator to be the event that happens more frequently. 
And that's because if, if the denominator is zero, we don't have a data point for that because we can't divide by zero. So you should always try to make this be a, the denominator be the event that is more likely to happen than, than the numerator. Finally, one last option for measure as that I'll show you that's available with split metrics is the idea of tracking all events across a particular traffic type. So for instance, you know, if I click on this, um, there's, there's some categories here at the bottom which says statistical comparison not possible measured across users. This would say measured across whatever traffic type this, this metric was. And those are account of event values, sum of event values, average event values, and count of unique users. And so the idea here is those are, those are analogs to what we saw there measured per user and it's measured across user. So this is tracked for a particular split as a single number for each treatment. And so you would have a count of booking events for the on treatment, for instance, and a count of booking events for the off treatment. And so we can't do a statistical comparison because it's, it's just two numbers. So it gives you a, a general idea how the treatments are comparing against each other, but doesn't allow us to compute a p-value to assess statistical significance. So you can see there are lots of options and possibilities for creating metrics in split. I hope you found this general introduction helpful.